On August 28th, the Pentagon announced the Replicator program, which is supposed to produce various drones and loitering munitions. The program was announced by Deputy Defense Secretary Kathleen Hex, speaking at the National Defense Industrial Association's Emerging Technologies Conference. Ms. Hicks said the replicator program will help fight the issue of current innovation happening too slowly, and bet on platforms that are small, smart, cheap and numerous. Hicks and Admiral Christopher O'Grady, Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, will oversee the program. Furthermore, Ms. Hicks put China in the crosshairs of the replicator program. She said that China's core advantage is numbers, that they have more missiles, ships and troops. The replicator is supposed to be a response to those Chinese capabilities, not by matching them pound for pound, but by innovation. As it was fairly obvious, the war in Ukraine is an event that helped convince the higher-ups to organize and form the program. Ms. Hicks said that cheap, even commercial-grade drones have proven indispensable on the battlefield, both for recon, targeting, but also for attacks. She said that attributable autonomous systems are the right kind of innovation for the US, and that even Russia used mass of cheap drones in the war in Ukraine. What is interesting is that she did not mince words, saying that the replicator program is aimed squarely against China. Ms. Hicks said China today posed a generational challenge to American society, that the US will counter China's armed forces with numerous systems, and that the US systems will be harder to plan against, harder to be hit, and harder to beat. Hicks said that the time is right to push and rapidly scale up innovative technologies, that the industry is ready and that a hard target is required, target being multiple thousands of autonomous systems used across various domains both produced and delivered in 18 to 24 months. That's a hugely ambitious timetable. Usually a new drone or guided munition needs a few years of concept and prototyping, followed by a few years of testing, before a slow production ramp up is achieved, often leading to 5 or even 10 years passing before a system is fielded in numbers. Binkov does think 24 months is a bit too ambitious, but we'll see. Hicks said the Pentagon will keep its focus on the core systems it has or is developing, meaning large and expensive platforms that may not be numerous, but ones which offer great capabilities. The replicator will add to those capabilities, focusing on investments in autonomous systems. The goal of the program is to deploy a very large number of small drones and munitions and to do that very, very quickly. The replicator program is supported by the Pentagon's Defense Innovation Unit. SAD office has for some time now called for a hedge strategy, where commercial innovation is supposed to achieve capability for the Pentagon, on a large scale, all being done on top of existing programs. Usually DoD programs use bespoke development and production lines, or at least build upon previous DoD programs. That tends to be expensive and take a long time. The replicator aims to let agile commercial sector companies do a lot of the work and to leverage their existing strengths. For the Pentagon, that's rarely the norm. It was not all just empty talk. The 2025 defense spending bill draft already has $1 billion allocated for a plethora of low-cost drones, robust communication technologies and advanced AI and computing technologies, all managed by the Defense Innovation Unit. While that is just a draft of the bill, the DoD has already requested $1.8 billion for artificial intelligence research for the 2024 budget. In 2021, there were almost 700 various artificial intelligence-related projects within the DoD. The replicator program, according to Hicks, is going to bring those investments together, reorganize existing funds, manage them and scale up production. The expected cost of the replicator for now is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. But that may be only the beginning. The money is not the major challenge, Hicks said, as DoD programs usually cost billions or tens of billions. But getting the production up and running and doing it on a major scale, that is going to be challenging. A byproduct of the replicator is that its lessons could be applied to other programs within the DoD. Hicks said that the end result might be cutting years of a development process, because the standards would have been figured out. Hicks said that the replicator may live up to its name if other Pentagon's programs start, well, replicating it. How it's set up, how it's run, 
how quickly it can innovate and adapt. Those are the new buzzwords of the moment. So what all that boils down to is this. The DoD seems to be confident enough, after more than a decade of research and development in autonomous systems, that it wants to leverage that knowledge and it wants to leverage the cheap commercially available electronics and cheap commercial grade mass production to quickly establish a new arsenal of drones and munitions. The Pentagon seems to want to partner up with both existing but also new private firms, which are developing commercial grade systems, and having observed the lessons from Ukraine, create that aforementioned arsenal in mere years. Key words that have been repeated are autonomous and attritable. Autonomous means all those recon drones and munitions would need little to no human input once they have been launched. And attritable means they have to be cheap enough so they can be lost in battles to enemy fire in mass numbers, yet that the remaining systems would still get the job done. Autonomous systems means that the image recognition technology is expected to be good enough to be used in battlefield conditions, with lots of camouflage, clutter, smoke screens and so on on top of the autonomous movement and tactical decision making, which are granted easier to be pulled off by a flying drone, which can move freely through the air, as opposed to a ground vehicle, which would need to navigate various obstacles. System autonomy is important because signals and the communication bandwidth to the drones and munitions can be compromised. It can be degraded or denied by the enemy, or simply be limited due to the vast number of systems in the area. Rusi Institute estimated that Ukraine is losing up to 10,000 various drones per month. Those of course include the cheapest and most numerous commercial grade drones. Russian jamming systems can allegedly neutralize whole flocks of such drones in one go. So the autonomy of a drone, its ability to be resilient, its ability to share and distribute information between themselves is crucial. Hundreds of munitions in a small area is something that would be hard to direct navigate and coordinate by human input. AI is thus crucial, and a bit scary. Who knows how many friendlies and civilians might get hurt if AI deciding on targets becomes the norm. Multiple thousands of drones were mentioned to be produced. That may mean upward of 5000 or even more systems, fielded within just 24 months, that's a tall order. But if we're talking about systems like the Switchblade, Altius and so on, which are near commercial grade systems and which have been used in Ukraine, then such figures may be attainable. Several thousand may sound like a lot, but the US is already using over 10,000 cruise missiles and over 10,000 smaller drones. So the program likely aims higher. If it proves to be successful, we may well see tens of thousands of various cheap drones and munitions come online by the 2030s. How is that different from the current systems, one might ask? It seems the replicator wants to change the development logic. Instead of having separate cheap drone and munitions programs, which often develop software and systems independently and thus inefficiently, the replicator wants to create a common baseline, run and helped by the Pentagon, where all the Pentagon's experience in AI will be injected into otherwise cheap and mass-produced systems that commercial drone makers can offer. These replicator systems are not to be confused with Air Force's collaborative combat aircraft or Loyal Wingman drones, which are more expensive and run under a different program. The old main goal means the program aims to deliver a wide variety of systems to a wide variety of users, from the Air Force, which could possibly eject packages of such cheap drones from aircraft, to the Army, which could use both larger rocket-fired and longer-range drones and munitions as well as use mortar and hand-launched smaller drones, to the Navy, which might use some sort of seagoing vessels or even unmanned tiny submersibles and boats. The latter have already been used in Ukraine with some noted successes. The US Air Force has already toyed with unmanned attritable combat aircraft. Here's a 2019 artist's rendering of such an aircraft. The US Navy is already prototyping unmanned though not yet attritably low-cost ships, like this one. Now the replicator is still very early in the process, and the people behind it do not want to share much information yet. It could end up being yet another program that goes several times over budget, that's years late, and that has numerous issues even when fielded. 
but the goal the replicator is aiming for seems not to be just to deliver on its own program, but it appears to be a call to arms to the wider array of DoD programs. Future warfare is almost assured to have thousands of drones and munitions operating in swarms. Will they come by 2026? Will they cost tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands? And will they be managed by the Replicator program or some other programs? That's really beside the point. Replicator is the first one to try to manage it at scale and unite multi-domain needs. Even if it stumbles, it will surely point the way for future such programs and to future conflicts in general, where drones will play a much greater role. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.